that off with the thread. And it's a, this is a uni in fire orange, an 8 -0. The hook I'm using is a size 10 Camasan B175. It's quite a heavy hook. You can go lighter if you want. You go larger on size, you can go smaller. I have tied them down to size 14s. But anyway, I would take your thread down, form a layer of thread all the way down the shank until you're in line with the barb of the hook. Now the tail, we've got two tails. A short one which is made up of glow bright, glow bright floss number four. Now it's a quite a, it's a very fine floss and this is ten strands pulled pull together and then fluffed in, fluffed with a brush to bring them together. And then for the the tail, this is sunburst tippet dyed. Uh, well, it's tippet dyed sunburst. It's a very good color com color. It's very popular nowadays. It's a, an in between color I would call it between like a yellow and an orange. It works extremely well. Anyway, tail first. Maybe tying the glow bright floss in first. Now what I do is tie it full length of the body. Just with a couple of turns. Now I've only got maybe five, six mil or so of the floss. The, the tail, the under tail in this case, is going to be half the length of the, the, the tail on top, fibers on top. Now what I'm going to do here is bring the tips of the scissors in and trim by holding the ends of uh, the tippet and then pulling away the feather which will leave obviously the cut ends and the tail which is there. As I said I like it twice the length on top. So there you go. There's a good half a dozen or more fibres. It's quite a big fly so you want to make sure you've got a new, enough fibres there. The rib it could be a fine wire or a, an oval gold tinsel. In my this case I'm using the Venyard number 14 oval gold. Which is really like a small. Just catch it on the side. Now at this point, just take a thread up tying in your tails and your rib. Makes for a stronger fly if you do this. Run it all the way up. And then back down. Quick, quick. Don't have to be too fussy, but more so to so I like tying materials in. Now, the body colour, as I say, is two different colours. This is a, like, this is a sunburst. It's not orange and it's not yellow. It's an in-between. It's a lovely colour. This is a seals fur dyed in sunburst. Just slightly dub it on. You could use a synthetic. You could, there's many materials out there you can use. It's entirely up to you. In this case I'm using the seals for just build up your body. Now it's halfway up. Just tighten as you go. Don't be shy, put it on. Now once you've got that on, the next part, I've got some it looks like black to you, but it's actually claret. It's black claret. It's very dark. It's a great colour. Seals for for the second part of the body. Again, double it on. Nice and tight. Come in. Fold up. You want to leave it probably around about two mil or so at the the head area. Once you've got enough seals for it, just draw back, pull back off the thread, the excess. Now for the body hackle, again I've got sunburst dyed, in this case badger. Makes a lovely colour. A uh, nice mark on the fly. Length of the fibre, you're looking at least, say, probably one to two times by the gape. So it's like one and a half to two times the gape itself. Catch it on the side. Anything going forward the eye just now, I'm going to trim it away, tidy up. Just take your thread down. Come back up. I like to have it two or three turns up here, just, this is to lift, I'm going to have a hen hackle in front, this will help lift it up, and then take your badger hackle down, around about four times or so, four to five times anyway. Then all I do is bring across my rib, bring it up through, probably four to five turns on the way up, you can break that off just now or leave it, just until you've actually tied off your rib, but I normally break it off. Now just before I bring the last part of the rib up, 
I draw back any fibres that's going forward, bring the rib up beside the thread, put a 90 degree bend in, and then tie it down. Three or four turns to make sure it's not going to move on you, trim away the excess, and like I say all the time, tidy up before you do anything else. Now I'm going to bring out some of the seals fur into the actual badger hackle, so some velcro, which I've got in a lollipop stick here. It's just sticky back velcro, you can buy anywhere. Draw it out, it just helps to blend the hackle and the body together. And what it does actually, the seals fur works into the fibres of the your body hackle and it gives it like an, uh, say, an underdub or a fibre which helps keep the fibres apart and more body, when, especially when it's wet. Now, for the front hackle, I've got back claret again. In this case, it's a hen hackle. And we tie it in by the tip. Just draw back any fibres. Draw them back. Pull three or four turns in to actually hold the tip. And then pull back the tip. Tuck it, tuck it back. Your, your hackle's got to break off if you do that. Trim away the point. There you go. Now the hackle fibre length is actually you've got to have it longer than the body hackle. And sometimes in like to the, the say the first thread or the uh, the floss tail, fibre should come to about there or just before it. So all I do is fold back the fibres and then do one turn in front of the other. Work your way up. You can use a set of hackle pliers if you want, so tile up to you. I just feel more control using my fingers. If you can, if you can actually wind a hackle on with your finger, you'll find your hardly ever snap. Once you've got enough hackle, just bring it straight up, bring a thread with it, put a 90 degree bend into the stem. Take the thread down, and for security, you can fold this back and tie over the top. Down two or three times, you can trim away or break away the base. And tile up to you. Now that's your Wolfie's yeah, double triple. Two tails, two body colours, and two hackles. Fire orange head, nice and bright. For a slight variant of it, you can come in, get yourself some jungle top. Now I'm just gonna take a hackle off here, it's a probably a split hack or a split. Jungle cotton, if you, if you look here, here's one, it's ideal for the, the job. See there's a split right in the middle. You can use your scissors or, in this case I can encourage that split further down the feather. Just take it all the way. All I do is pull back what I don't need. Now I'm going to tie on the black area. That's like a fine velvet. It actually ties in much easier than tying on the actual the nail itself, as you would call it, or the, the shiny part of the jungle cot. And there you are. That's it tied in. On either side, just splitting it and pulling it down either side. You pull this back. Now you don't worry about the head. If you think the head's too big, don't worry because the fire on thread is an aiming point. And I'm building it from the front up. I trim it just before I tie off. Talking about this jungle cock. So it'll never, never pull out. Just gonna come in here and make sure this is neat. Carry one up. Keep the thread tight. And then go in wet finish. Two, three, four. It's plenty. Come in, trim away your thread, and all you've got to do is varnish. It's all the way around. A couple of coats. Always make sure that the first one's dry before you add the second. And there we are. And that there is Wolfie's double triple. An excellent wet fly, bog fly. Certainly got the colours to bring a fish up or two. Uh, it's fished in Ireland and Scotland and the lochs. With great effect.